this is a DAC XP we've got and uh, the report with this one is that the, the analogue side is fine um, but the digital inputs sound very crackly um, and that's all the digital inputs, the optical and the coax, uh, everything there and I have heard this uh, uh, error with or fault with uh, various XP units um, but this is the first one I've looked at so we'll see how we go um, now normally the first thing we do is get the covers off and uh, see what's going on inside but in this case we're going to make a measurement first so that we've got some kind of reference as to what's actually going on because uh, you know a crackle is a kind of generic description and uh, doesn't really help us uh, explore uh, the thing um, but anyway I've got a I've got a, a, a reference signal going in the optical port here and the output's connected to the scope. So let's have a look at the scope and we'll see what uh, it's shown us. And if we, uh, to enable my channel, and we can see I can't even trigger the scope there. Uh, there's just rubbish going on everywhere so I can't get a decent trigger. And if I do a single capture and I keep doing the single capture, there's a good waveform actually um, but then you know we get all this kind of random spikes going on um, it's maybe getting a little bit better as it's warming up actually but uh, obviously that kind of spikes that are going on there is not going to sound very good um, and it seems uh, independent of volume, you know I have my volume controls working just fine but I've got all this garbage on the signal um, so, uh, I think we have to now go inside and see if we can find the source of what's going on here. Here we are inside then, and uh, so what we've got, we've, uh, we can see that we've got two distinct boards here, two, two different colours even, um, and the, so this section here is, is the analogue side, and we know that that's all working, there's no issues in there. And then this side's the digital side, uh, and we can see that we've got separate power supplies for them both, which is a fairly reasonable idea. Um, and I can see on the board we've got, you know, I've got the uh, sort of uh, optical receiver uh, device, and we've got a sample rate converter, and then we've got some DACs on on these boards here. So it's all kind of standard stuff, and there's a whole bunch of regulators there. Um, now I can't see anything obvious, you know, you usually, if it's a power amp anyway, you can sometimes uh, see a, a blown capacitor or whatever. Um, but what I, I can smell a very strong, uh, there's a very strong smell of electrolyte uh, going on here. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of suspicious there's, there's maybe a capacitor gone. Some of these uh, surface mount ones, of course, you can't really see because I think they're gonna they're gonna gas from the the bottom, uh, not so much the top as as you get with your traditional electrolytics. Um, so I think, um, given there's so many regulators, and I don't have a test strip here to kind of uh, give me any means to sort of figure out what voltages are good or not um, what I think I need to do is look at the these various digital devices and we'll look at the supply lines on the device and uh, see if there's any clues there as to what's going on so I first checked the uh, DAC uh, device on the board just checked its power supply lines and it's got several sort of 5 volt lines and uh, then there's a 3.3 and when I looked at the 3.3 .3, it was quite obvious what was going on um, or, or that there was an issue there certainly um, so let's just take a look at that here and so this is uh, 2 volts of division and you can see how much noise is on this uh, signal it's like a division of noise, so there's 2, two volts of noise and uh, the voltage is sort of dipping down there to about 2 volts and up to 4 now this is meant to be 3.3 .3 volts, um, so obviously that's not going to make the DAC very happy and uh, that's really the likely cause of why, the, uh, why we're seeing some of this junk on the DAC output. And if we look at the input to that regulator, it's reading sort of just under 5 volts there, but also very very noisy, um, so that's just not right at all. 
Um, and I did mention the, earlier that I, I could smell the electro, electrolyte uh, when I opened the unit. So we're pretty sure there's some capacitor problems here. So let's have a quick look with the ESR meter and see what we're see what's going on. So the 3.3 volt regulator is tucked away under this uh, sort of power distribution board here, uh, and there's a couple of capacitors associated with that. These are a couple of 5 volt regulators, and I think these are all 5 as well. Um, and if we just go and look at the ESR, and here's one of the 5 volt lines, yeah, it's reading 15 ohms there, and that's just that capacitor's completely dry, it's dead, it's not doing its job. Um, if we go into one of the, let's see if I can get into the 3.3, there again, about 15 ohms. So, Essentially, you know, we've got a, a board full of dry capacitors here, and um, you know, this unit's exactly eight years old now, so it's not particularly old, and it's this is still a production model. So it's kind of disappointing to see, you know, that these parts have degraded so much in that time. Of course, I don't know if, how, you know, much this unit's been used. What is what is life? Uh, uh, has been like up to now um, but you know generally we'd be expecting some uh, longer operating time than that um, for these kind of parts so these are all going to have to come out and you can see the two DAC boards here have got all these aluminium electrolytics on them and then there's an analog board here and of course I can't get into them to desolder and change them so these boards are going to have to come out also um, so we'll make a start in dismantling the unit then and then I'm, I'm going to have to do a shopping list of um, uh, replacement parts these these are not sort of parts I keep so we'll have to get a, a new order set up for that and uh, so let's let's make a start and take the unit apart and uh, see where we go this is a curious thing here, this uh, board is just uh, duplicating the mains connections to go to these two different transformers. And I, when, it, when it was bolted to the unit I thought there was maybe some filter on there, but there's not. Um, it's just a curious uh, curious way of doing that, but uh, there we go. Alright, so all the screws and connectors are off now. So. Um, Good, there's no hard wired connections to the board right enough, that means the board comes out quite easy. So that's good. Let's shift the main unit. So, what have we got here? Oh god, look at the back of this thing. My god. Let's take a closer look at the back of this board then. And you know, this unit is a signature. Uh, DAC XP signature um, and it is 8 years old and, and kind of when I see this level of mods going on here and the kind of dubious soldering and flux everywhere I mean this looks like a lab uh, prototype really not what I'd expect for a production uh, unit so I wonder if this is one of the very early ones that's uh, I mean Cyrus obviously deemed this acceptable to ship um, um, but I, you know, I just wonder if this is one of the early ones. I certainly wouldn't expect them to be doing this over a period of time because that's quite costly and time-consuming to do these kind of mods, and uh, you've obviously got reliability questions over that as well. Um, so we can see we've got a capacitor here over. This is a regulator on the other side, uh, so they've added that, and then this seems to be a series resistor. Uh, to a regulator as well and we've got a surface mount capacitor soldered in here and I can see right on this in the side here that the actual end cap of that capacitor is missing so that's actually not doing anything it's not even in circuit because it's it's been so badly soldered that uh, you know that end cap's missing so we've got this kind of stuff going on here and then these are uh, power supplies to crystal oscillators and we can see we've had some modification to them as well um, 
looks like you, we've maybe had a ferrite previously and now we've added a small inductor, something like that. And then if we look at the other section of the board here, we've actually got some, uh, there's a bunch of parts that have been removed on both sides of the board. And then we've got some wire mods that are tacked in here. And even the, the insulation's missing from some of these links. Um, it's going to be alright, but that's just not what you expect in a production unit at this sort of price point. Um, you, you know, and the, the board's clearly, it's filthy. It's, this has never been cleaned since these mods have been done. We've got flux residue all over the place. Um, so, you know, given that this is a, still a production unit, and, you know, we're going to have to spend some time to uh, do the um, repair on this, and uh, I do question if this one has actually better been sent back to Cyrus. Uh, you know, if they do have a flat uh, fee for repair, my expectation is that they would change this board. You know, they, they're not going to spend time working to component level, they'll change the board. Um, and given the, given what I see here, that's probably the best option in this case. So I'm going to park this one for a while, I'll go and speak to the owner, see what they want to do, and uh, put this one to the side for now.